show flights around the world in 3D with no plugins. Did I mention it was quite easy? The Holy Grail. Not that one. This perennial request comes up on the forums, um, perennially? You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Inconceivable! For those of you who don't know, and hello by the way, for those of you who don't see the big deal, After Effects can do 3D, and After Effects can place map markers onto 3D spheres. But to get arcs between those map markers in 3D has always required a plugin like Trapcode Particular. And since that is now only available via a pretty expensive subscription to Maxon, it's not always a viable option. And even if money is no object, it still requires a fair bit of work. So here's a method with about as much work, but it's free. First things first, we need a model of the Earth. And for this method to work, we need to use After Effects' own 3D renderer. Here's a lovely model I downloaded from Sketchfab. There's loads of Earths for you to choose from, and I've added it to a comp. And next, I'll go to Layer, New, Null Object. And I'll make this 3D and hit Ender to name it Control. And I'll parent the Earth to it, so that I can move it around, rotate it, it's all good stuff. Next, I'll go to Effect, Expressions Control, Slider Control. And I'll rename it to Radius. I don't believe it is possible at this present time to get the model's width. So later, I'm going to use this slider to allow me to move solids across the surface with this value setting the radius. As I've done this before, I know this model's radius. When imported at 1%, it happens to be 490 pixels. So that's what I'm setting. And next, we need another 3D null object. So select the control null, and then hold Control and tap D to duplicate it, and delete the radius slider, and rename this to Start, and make it a child of the Control Null, and then go to Effect, Expression Controls, Angle Control, and rename this to Latitude, and then duplicate the effect, and rename this to Longitude, and then look up the latitude and longitude for a location you could identify on a globe. I've picked London, which is 51.5 degrees by 0 0.1. Now, expand the transform properties on the timeline. Hold Alt and click on the position property and type. Var radius equals and pick up the control nulls radius slider. Semicolon. On a new line type, var lat equals and pick up the latitude slider. Minus one. Var lon equals, and the same for longitude. Now we need to convert these values to radians, because mathematics. Var lat rad equals degrees to radians brackets lat semicolon. After Effects expressions include many functions that handle things like radian conversion for us. Create another variable, lon rad, for longitude. And now we need to use school trigonometry to calculate where on our sphere we want to place the 3D null. Remember sine and cosines? And you thought you'd never need them. We know two angles and we know the length of the hypotenuse. So, var x equals radius times math.cos brackets latrad times math.cos brackets lonrad. Semicolon. Var y equals radius times math dot sign brackets latrad semicolon. Var z equals radius times math dot cos brackets latrad times math dot sign brackets lonrad semicolon. Square brackets x comma y comma z close square brackets. Three points or three ends of three triangles which when combined give us a location in 3D space. Pretty neat, especially when I use the control nulls rotation controls to move around. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have spotted that London is not in the middle of the Pacific. That's because our model is not oriented to match up with the global coordinate system. So, 
select the model and tap R to expose its rotation properties. And just angle the Earth until the origin point of the start null lines up with London, in my case. There we go. And now you can add a label, make it 3D, parent it to the start null. And that's pretty good already. So let's duplicate the start null and rename it to end. And I've looked up the coordinates of New Delhi. Never been, but it sounds like a lovely place. Although I do appreciate that those words spoken with a British accent might sound a bit... Let's move on. Dropping in those coordinates, you can see the end null has been moved. And I'll create another map marker. So that's the coordinate system. Now time for a title card. With no layer selected, change the rectangle tool to the ellipse and double click it to create an ellipse the size of the comp, but one that's centered in the comp. And rename this to arc. Now go to effect, expression controls, slider control, and rename this to height and set the value to 300. This is going to determine the height of our arc. Expand ellipse one on the timeline until you can see size, which is in the path. And holding alt, click on the stopwatch. In the expressions area type, var x equals, then pick whip the height slider. Semicolon, var y equals, and use the tiny library menu to select vector math length which will calculate the length from the start to the end. So replace point one with the start's position and replace point two with end's position. Semicolon. Square brackets x comma y close square brackets. So the shape of our ellipse is determined by the height we want the arc and the distance between the two null objects. So now expand the ellipse's transform properties, not the layer's transform properties, and open the expressions area for the position and type square brackets zero comma and pick whip the second value of the size or the control nulls radius divided by two close square brackets that gets an ellipse with its edge on the layers anchor point so that means we can make it a 3d null and a child of star null and zero out its coordinates Then, if we tap R to expose its rotation properties, and holding Alt, click on the orientation stopwatch, and use the tiny add menu to select vector math look at. We can use the layers location and the end nulls location to angle the arc from the start to the end null. Which doesn't look right until we set the X rotation to 90 degrees. I'm just going to create a camera so I can more easily move around. And that's almost ready to use. If I move the end, the arc goes with it. Let's turn off fill in the shape layer. It's a little bit odd. And you can expand stroke and increase the width. Set the caps and joints to round. And you could add a trim paths if you'd like to animate the movement. Only trouble is, if you look at the arc end on, like this, it does become apparent it is 2D. But we're using the advanced 3D renderer, which means we can extrude the shape layer. Expand geometry options. Set the extrusion to 5 with a convex bevel. And because we've added an expression to the shape layer's orientation property, you can still adjust its rotation properties to change how it appears. And there we go, a 3D arc able to move from point to point on a 3D globe. If you need more than one arc, then just duplicate the whole setup. You will need to alter the expressions on the arc size and orientation to point to the new null objects, but that's all. 
you could choose to add a layer control and update the expressions to look at these. Here's a screenshot showing you how. And then you can add as many as you like. All right, maybe it's not the Holy Grail, but at least with this tutorial, you can now mark the Holy Grail's location.